In the past, farming was as simple as this. The farmer replanted and harvested according to the natural cycle. However, recently things got a bit more complicated. Big machines and chemicals made their way into the fields and intensive farming was born. Production boomed, but at the expense of nature. Farming became an environmentally damaging activity. It also became very lucrative for agrochemical companies who produce pesticides. Profits overtook the public interest. Seeking to constantly expand their bottom line, agrochemical companies began to play with GMOs, genetically modified organisms. But what is a GMO? It's an organism which has had an external gene artificially inserted to give it new properties. For example, corn. Here's the DNA that will be modified. Then you find the organism containing the new gene to be introduced. Animals, plants, bacteria, the spectrum of living organisms is wide. Not this one, not this one. Ah, this bacteria is just the one. We isolate the gene. We introduce the DNA into the corn and there we go. This is called transgenetifying. With transgenetifying, the natural cycle is short-circuited. For thousands of years, seeds were produced naturally by plants. Now they're produced in laboratories. Today, there are two types of GMO made, those that produce their own pesticides and those that resist certain herbicides. But as a result of being exposed to them, weeds and insects develop a resistance to these products. They mutate. In order to get rid of them, you have to use higher doses of chemical products or different pesticides. On top of this, there's the risk of genetic contamination. Through unintended crossbreeding, GMO genes can modify the genetic code of other organisms. And that's not to mention the fact that there's no reliable study on the long-term impacts of GMOs on health. Big agrochemical companies are also trying to control seed distribution around the world. Patents are being granted on seeds and other life forms. If a farmer wants to replant, he will be obliged to repurchase seeds and the weed killer that goes with them, not to mention other pesticides. The exclusion from seed production makes the farmer totally dependent financially. The agrochemical multinationals are imposing GMOs on the planet. After the USA and South America, it's now the turn of Asia and Southern Africa. Once upon a time, farming looked something like this. Nowadays, fields look more like this. The polycultures and biodiversity of southern countries have been swallowed up by monocultures, with the sole aim of producing vegetable protein for mass animal husbandry in the industrial countries. Who now knows that most processed foods contain genetically modified soya, maize or rape? And that the same GMOs also serve to feed the animals whose products we consume? Granted, in Europe it's compulsory to label food of vegetable origin, but not animal products. And this information is in any case in very small print. This lack of transparency prevents consumers from having a free choice. But being able to choose GMO-free products helps the development of local agriculture, encourages biodiversity, promotes the financial independence of farmers, and reduces the overwhelming power of the multinationals.